I'm Mr. Beat. I'm standing at the exact location of a baseball game that took place nearly a hundred years ago where the Ku Klux Klan lost to an all-black team. The year was 1925. The Ku Klux Klan, the infamous terrorist organization that pretty much hated all groups of people who weren't native white Protestants, was trying to improve its image. Sure, its membership had dramatically increased during the early 1920s, and it was no longer a surprise to see scenes like this, weirdos parading down the street wearing white sheets on their heads. But despite their more horrifying mainstream appeal at the time, they were still quite a controversial group. After all, they targeted African Americans, Jews, Muslims, homosexuals, communists, atheists, Latinos, Asian Americans, and Native Americans. That's, uh... That's a lot of people. So despite being out in the open like this, millions of others tried to ban them, including in places like where I'm at right now. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I'm in Wichita, Kansas. On January 10th, 1925, the Kansas Supreme Court said the Ku Klux Klan was a, quote, foreign corporation and therefore couldn't conduct business in the state unless it got special permission from the state. After the Kansas State Legislature failed to pass a law that would have let the KKK do business in the state without special permission, and after the state rejected the KKK's request for permission to do business in the state, the KKK KKK was like, oh crap, we better clean up our image. But instead of the KKK deciding to no longer hate or terrorize entire groups of people, they were like, let's just play baseball instead. It planned a publicity stunt to make the KKK look more better, I guess? It would play a well-promoted baseball game against a Negro League team. The Negro Leagues were professional baseball leagues made up entirely of African American teams. The Negro Leagues existed, of course, since baseball was segregated back then and blacks weren't allowed to play Major League Baseball. Anyway, the KKK asked a Negro League baseball team called the Wichita Monrovians if they'd like to play, and they agreed. The Monrovians, named in honor of the capital of Liberia, by the way, mostly accepted the offer to raise money to fund the team, but also to donate to local charities. Oh, here's a fun fact. The name of the Wichita Monrovians catcher was Thomas Jefferson, named after the third president of the United States. His teammates called him T-Baby, though. The KKK also got Irish Catholic umpires for the game to be like, see, we may hate blacks and the Irish but at least we can get along with them for a baseball game, eh? The Wichita Beacon announced the Monrovians would host a game at Island Park Stadium against Wichita Clan number six on June 21st, 1925. The article warned, quote, strangleholds, razors, horsewhips, and other violent implements of argument will be barred at the baseball game. But when the day of the game arrived, things were pretty chill around here. I mean, things were also really hot. It was 102 degrees outside, but it was chill in terms of the people who showed up to watch the game. Despite there being a quote, good sized interracial crowd, there was not one instance of violence recorded during the game, on or off the field. In fact, there wasn't even any cheating. Perhaps it was too hot out for anyone to be angry. The first half of the game was kind of boring. Only in the later innings did both teams start to score several runs, probably since the heat had worn the pitchers down. In case it wasn't obvious by this point, the stadium where the game took place no longer exists. In fact, the entire island it was located on no longer exists either. Ackerman Island was a sandbar island in the middle of the Arkansas River in downtown Wichita. Named after Joseph Ackerman, a local business dude who bought the island, it was also used to host an amusement park called Wonderland Park. It closed down in 1918. Island Park Baseball Stadium ultimately was torn down in 1933 
1983 due to flooding concerns. After this, Franklin Roosevelt's Works Progress Administration hired 1,500 unemployed men to remove the sandbar by taking the east side of the island to fill in the west channel of the Arkansas River. Where I'm currently standing used to be the island, but today it's the west bank of the river. So how did the baseball game end? Well, the Monrovians won 10 to 8, but the game was so insignificant that there was no media fanfare. In fact, all the Wichita Eagle recorded the next day was a two-sentence report of the game with the headline, Monrovians Beat KKK. It was a low-key event mostly forgotten in history. Until now, that is, share this video with every animal you know. This baseball game in which a Negro League team defeated a KKK team is evidence that perhaps race relations in the United States during the 1920s wasn't as bad as most of us tend to think. In fact, for the rest of the decade, Wichita hosted plenty of more interracial baseball games. And less than 22 years after the Negro League KKK game in Wichita, Jackie Robinson famously broke the color barrier when he made his Major League Baseball debut on April 15th, 1947 in front of 16,623 surprisingly tolerant fans at Ebbets Field in Brooklyn, New York. In fact, I'd argue that not just baseball, but all sports have been way better than anything else in history at uniting people of different backgrounds. So go my favorite sports team and go yours. Yeah, check it out, subscribe. One more thing before you go that you probably didn't know about me. I grew up in Augusta, Kansas, which is just east of Wichita. And when I was a sophomore at Augusta High School, Mr. Beast was born in, wait for it, Wichita.